Yo, ho, ho, hello, hello. Welcome to a late night session of the Watch Hangout. I fully expect Nate Dog to wake up since he asks every single day for the stream. Um, so I uh, decided to throw a, a stream up, up, up style. I am joined by the president of Las Vegas, Blake, and the Don of Turbion himself. Hey, AJ, how you boys doing? It's late night, baby. <laughs> What's up, guys? Uh, so let's. Uh, we got two cameras. Let's do a customary wrist check. I'm wearing uh, my my Automir, my Automir from Casio. Yeah, the Mystery G Automir. Nice. Got, like, I got a um, a Braver. Swedish watch. So Robber. Braver. It's pretty cool. It and that strap, yeah, April. That a rubber a rubberized strap or is that a Yeah, it's one I just had that I found at home. This uh this will be out <laughs> April second though. So you wanna tell us a little bit about the watch or you're not 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 yet? Uh yeah, I'll say a little. Uh it's so SW two hundred, it's DLC thirty seven millimeter. Um, it's actually eight millimeters thick, sapphire crystal, made in Sweden, and assembled in Sweden. Um, Sweden. And it's based off it's based off a racing um, team. So like they have like a few different racing teams, like from like vintage biking cycling teams, and this one is the the team Renault, which is where the little like checker pattern comes from at midnight. Um, and also the little crown there, and uh, and yeah, so hopefully they still send me watches after I show it off before while it's still on embargo. But whatever. Oh, it's on embargo. Okay, see, I didn't mean to do that to you. Yeah, it's okay. So I trust you guys. All right, let's see who we have. We got Nick Lovin. Rentals notice his wristwatch. Uh, I don't know if you're talking about uh, people who rent your properties or the. Uh, Ladies around McLovin, but I approve. We got Bill D saying hello, hello, member of the crew. We got that's right, Ali Ho Ho. Yeah, so he's talking about those kind of rentals. We got Ducky in the house as well. Welcome, welcome, and Jordan Touch as well. And I can't make out that avatar. It looks like a speedometer of some sort that I should recognize, but I do not. And we have the governor of California, Brody, on it. What up, Brody? Well. So Hello, Hello. How's your uh, how's your care package mixing ya? Brody's care package? Yeah, I sent Brody um oh, drink okay. set. Oh, the president of Las Vegas sending governor of California. All right, we got political scandal breaking out right here. <laughs> this is like that area in Georgetown, right, where the uh, deep state meets. Yeah, the deep state. Yeah. There we go. Exactly. This is that's what's happening here. So, mm -hmm. is that called? Do you know? Or should we not get into that? <laughs> that you know what I'm talking about? That area in Georgetown, like where they said yeah. where uh, JFK went to, uh, like a, yeah. a bar there. Yeah. Dude, if one of these days we can just do like our own Lex Friedman style. <laughs> I would love you on on the people who work like in geopolitics and stuff. But Lex Friedman had a, a debate that he posted. I don't know if it was yesterday or today on the Israeli-Palestinian conflict. He had an interview with the CEO, Sam Altman, of OpenAI. He had the Tucker right. Carlson recently. He's had a bunch that are like, we should do the same thing just among our panelists because I think a lot of people would be shocked to find out, like, between our audience and panelists, what some of us have done. Um, or to get people to get to know people a little bit better, mix things up a little bit. Yeah, I would like to do that on like a separate channel. I think that would be a ton of fun. Um, I mean, I don't know if we could get Tucker Carlson on, but you know, we could start somewhere, right, and see where it takes us. I can get Chelsea, Chael Sonnen on. I can get a USC fighter on. Oh, that'd be cool. Yeah. But, um, but, uh, I'm yeah, sure we can get Nick Prado on. That's what I was asking about. Yeah, we can get Nick Prado on that. We're not good at fantasy, but we'll get him on. <laughs> He's a good watch back there. We got Brody responding to you, Blake. Great couple of items, one of Blake, one of JG. Thanks, fellas. I do need to sort something out for Brody myself. The uh, uh, 
for the for the gifts he's Oh, glad to know it arrived safely. Uh, thanks, uh, Brody. Uh, I hope you liked it. I took I took a little shot, a little uh, wild wild card shot with Brody's uh, win. Usually I send out like a little light or something, but uh, I took a I took a shot with a little something different. Hopefully, uh, hopefully you liked it. If not, uh, I don't know. Better luck next horse, I guess. <laughs> but hopefully, you like we've got Japan Barry telling me that I'm quite well sweeping myself. Um, yeah, yeah after three hours, it's not rubble stream. You can't, you can't have like a forever show. No, I give like, Curly three hours is like actually twenty three minutes. So I give Curly like a seven hour window. <laughs> yeah, well, Curly, I could usually go on to listen to. Yeah, I like, I love, I love listening to Curly. Curly's like the weirdest form of ASMR for me ever. <laughs> um, what's this about Curly retiring? Uh, you know, Curly retires every so often. It's like Michael Jordan, you know. Yes. <laughs> Um, and build the that I just saw the blue Monica. I just saw this in Orlando. Uh, it's it's not it's not my style of watch, but it was a lot prettier in person than the the, the victors online. Like it is, it is very some, very pretty. Not that I mind, but somebody's got some like feedback. Like a fan is on. Oh, oh, that's you. <laughs> yeah, I was gonna say because this headset's like. Three hours. I, 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 oh, it's his. Uh, I, I thought it was your new uh, headphones. That's why. That's why I was asking. No, I was worried as soon as you said it because this this headset's like three hours old. <laughs> I got this specific corset because I only use wired heads. Curly is, is a Yenta. <laughs> oh, that's yeah. a good. One. I only use wired headsets. Um, I oh, no. I sent him a fragrance. <laughs> he says he lost his sense of smell in an accident thirty years ago. What are the chances of that? You know, I've been giving away fragrances lately because I had such an extensive collection of like stuff I've like picked out I, I and curated. Know what you gave me. Right. And I just well now that I, I have the allergy to it where it just bothers my throat so much and my nose just like burns the hell out of me. I've been gifting them to people instead of selling them, you know, like on eBay or whatever some of these groups. Oh, uh, that's unfortunate. Sorry, Brody. I didn't know that uh I guess I should have just sent you a flashlight. <laughs> my <laughs> daughter had a bunch of friends over for the school project a few months ago and i had the fragrances you gave me and i keep like my own four or five top fragrances and there's a couple of ones that have been kind of retired but they're all in they were all in this box and i come home and the whole house smells like fucking sephora and they had gone like testing all the fragrances and <laughs> dude like half the fragrances disappeared my daughter just gave them away like they took some and stuff like what are you doing like what the hell is this at least they had a good time, right? Yeah, yeah. We got Mookie in the house as well. What's up, Mookie? I don't know Mookie! who Mookie is, but we have a Mookie in the house. You know what that is? Do anyone know what that's from? I've been working on that one. That's Danger Ranger. You ever see the clip when uh, uh, Chandelier is hitting the things? She goes, who's Mookie? And then Danger Ranger, the other guy, wham, wham, wham. You know that clip? Mm. Oh, that's an excellent clip. Is, is it a Mookie clip or is it like a movie? Yeah, it's, no, it's a Mookie clip. It's a Mookie clip. Uh, it's with Michelle Chandelier, the one that's on Oshin's show. Yeah, 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 yes, 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 yes. Actually, I did. Yeah. I did see that. The other guy, he goes, Mookie, when he gives him the $5 super chat. <laughs> we got Mitchell Halpern, Canadian Watch Monkey. I haven't seen Canadian Watch Monkey in a hot minute. Uh, go over to his channel as well. Um, he jumped on. So, all right. So, we have a topic. We'll get to the topic, but because I'm a pedantic asshole or as Hoff likes to call it militaristic so fuck you Hoff um the, uh, I have a couple of uh things to start with and the first thing is good news we've talked about this briefly but now Bloomberg that that also um owns a company that does market tracking uh as is saying what we've been saying for a few weeks now is that the Rolex prices in particular have stabilized um and they're saying Patek, and if you take a look at watch charts or watch analytics, and you look at the past like 30 to 45 days, almost everybody has started to stabilize within a few percent, right? Uh, there aren't any like falling off a cliff. Even Vacheron has started to stabilize, and Vacheron was falling off a cliff for a while, right? Uh, AP's hot models started creeping back up, not as much as the Rolex ones, um, which I obviously have a personal interest in. 
So in terms of news, I know that is welcome news for a lot of people. Um, and I think that the subtext is that, uh, you know, Bitcoin's rebounding. So some people want to tie that to Bitcoin. I actually think it's not nearly as tight as Bitcoin as it was before, which is good news, right? I think the, the, crashing. The, <laughs> I'm sorry. I said Bitcoin's been crashing the last week from a tie. Well, no, but I mean, down. it's going to meet it's going to meet resistance, right? But yeah. for our purposes, I think it's actually really good news that it's not tied to the Bitcoin boom or anything like that, right? Because that artificially inflated prices. And if you were able to get out, then great. I mean, it was good for you, but that artificially created this, you know. And then, and then YouTube's YouTube celebrities uh, reinforced this idea that it's just going to keep going, 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 going. It's not, and it wasn't, right? We all knew it wasn't, but it was in the gray market's interest to say it was going to keep going, 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 going. So now, the fact that it's really decoupled for Bitcoin, I think, is good for us because there will be more. Uh, uh, like stability and predictability moving forward. I think that's good. Do you feel like it's reached the bottom or where do, do you feel like it's, there's still more room to fall? And that, so economically, I think it's reached the bottom, right? But then room to fall is always subjective. If we have an expanded situation in the Ukraine, if the Israeli Palestinian conflict, continues to go kind of unabated and become even more controversial if you have you know haiti doesn't matter so much but if you have the instability that kind of creeps up and tails off and creeps and tails off let's say indonesia like that level of of instability would then further dampen stuff um we have the election coming up and we have people who continue to print money right on on both sides of the proverbial aisle all of those things can cause problem right but from a purely watch market thing, decoupling from Bitcoin was probably the biggest thing that happened during COVID, the coupling with Bitcoin and the decoupling, I think is huge, right? Um, so I, I think a lot of people forget that, that the it wasn't just that COVID happened and everybody was home and window shopping and watches and stuff like that. It was that there was the, the sudden tie to cryptocurrencies in general and the crypto craze that happened at the same time. And... I don't think that was ever good for us as watch collectors. Right? A lot of us are both, but I don't think it was good for us as watch collectors, right? So I like the decoupling. Oh, and we have yeah, Mr. Agree. Doubtfire joining us on the stream. <laughs> Mr. Doubtfire, I like that name. He found us on the right stream. I wasn't sure if you would. Yeah, what are we doing over here? Um, long story, I'll tell you tomorrow. Okay. <laughs> okay. <laughs> Always in the kitchen. So, we got Seb Nelly in the house as well. What's up, Seb? Good to see you. Um, so that was the first bit of news, right? Then the next thing, real briefly, it's not news per se, but it was over on Hodinkee. They're showing this new Zen, and we just spoke about Zen extensively, you know, um, the other day. And it's an interesting locked out take on a pilot's watch. I don't know if I like this, but it's like a wild departure for Zen. Um, kind of like it. I like it. I think I do. I just don't like. I'm not convinced. But it is a wild departure for Zen, right? And I actually like the fact that they're doing that right now. I forget what these straps are called. Um, bund, bund strap. Oh, bund. Yep, yep, bund strap. So, um, I do like that Zen did this. I like the pushers. Uh, I like a lot about the design. Um, it is 43 mil, so it's my size. I don't like the, the I don't like Chronos in general, but of Chronos, I like two register Chronos better. Right? Uh, it is a DLC tagmented watch, and again, I think this is the best picture of it. I was very happy to see this from. Is that a Zenith star in there? No, it's the Revolution yeah. magazine. Yeah. It is. Hey, uh, Jax, you have a, you have a fan that's. That's kind of pointing at the. Um... I just turned it off. Okay. All right. You still hear it? Can you please turn up your volume. Oh, let me try. Um, the. No, I don't hear it. Okay. Uh, let's turn off automatically just volume mm -hmm. and let's take the volume. 
Uh, Brody, you're going to have to let me know if that did the trick. <laughs> oh, sweet Jesus. It is a new setup for me. It's a new yeah, system. It's definitely louder. A new headset, so you'll have to let me know yeah, in the audience. Not. All right, good deal. Uh, kicked, it, kicked it up a notch. So, yeah, so the Zen release, and um, it is, what did they say the price was? 1500 It's expensive. It's like, I think it's like four ish. No, it's 3600 Yeah. Ugh. Limited edition, 300 pieces. I kind of, I kind of want to like hate on this real quick, or at least hate on limited releases because I love this watch, but like you have to really be a Revolution magazine like reader, kind of, <laughs> because it is a star, right? It is a star, so it could be perceived as something else. But when they do these rim limited edition release watches where they put like a logo of a of a brand or like co branded on the dial, I'm not a huge fan of that. Like just slap it on the case back and be done with it. Yeah, unless it's Tiffany, then I like it. Yeah, there you go. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, I mean, I, I've been at very critical of co-branding with, with the prestige brands, right? I'm generally very critical of it. It requires, like, a Casio G-Shock that's co-branded with Coca-Cola. Fair game. It's a Casio, right? Low-cost G-Shock. I think when you break the, like, $1,000 mark, the co-branding has to be very sensitive. Yeah. Um, a Tiffany co-branding, as JJ just said, fair enough, right? Good. There's a reason for that. Um, but I think even like the the fashion co-brandings that happen every so often, a Gucci or even a, a Hublot had a Berluti screw though. I think that's just a mistake. Even though I think Berluti is a much more prestigious brand than Hublot, but they're both, you know, I, I, I think it was a mistake. Um, this is a subtle co-branding. You wouldn't have the slightest clue what this is, right? So this one doesn't bother me so much. I'm even interested how Revolution Watch has suddenly, like in the past six months, a bunch of collaborations and a number of exclusives, including like Sitara Billard. Like they got really big really fast. I don't know if that's just a gap between by you know the uncertainty of Hodinki, but they got really big really, really fast. Um so McLovin, I, I don't know. I know this was a little bit sarcastic. Uh Liberty Safe does sales like every US holiday if you want full size, like massive safes. Um, good saves. Nobody does fire rating, right? So just consider fire rating a lie. And then if you want the modular saves like secure it, they do them almost every US holiday as well. And those modular saves, I think, are are the best investment for saves for, for any form of home security. Uh personally, that's my you know personal opinion. Um in any case. So But it has to be the size that he can walk into and uh take inventory. Then liberty safe. <laughs> Um, we had another new release was this Mito release, the Shark Teeth and Sarge release. I don't know that I like this much. I'm I would interested never... in Mito as a brand lately. I don't know why, actually. Something got in my head about the brand. Um, and I, I don't know. guess Shark Teeth at all. <laughs> if they didn't be, be have an open teeth. sharp mouth next to it, I would have never guessed it. No, that's true. I wouldn't have thought of it either. The, the, the you know, it, that's that's the thing they're going with here, right? Um, it is, you know, fifteen hundred US dollars, forty and a half mil. Still, we're slow on watch news going to watches and wonders. But does anybody have any opinions on Mido as a brand? Uh, I, I think that they're getting better personally like they they used to not be as popular as they are now like especially in the micro brand space but it just seems one of those springboard brands that, like if you're not able to afford you know like a tutor or like you know something and you're looking for a decent watch for the money then people will fall into Mito, you know um but it just seems like a, spring, a springboard brand in my opinion which is like it's kind of silly have, like you owned a, have you owned a Mido or Mido, I guess? No, no, I'm, I'm not, I'm not. No, JJ, uh, have you owned one? Oh, me? No, it's not. It, I have nothing against the brand. It's just not one I've ever kind of been interested in. Usually when I'm on lower end, I'm looking at like Seiko or Tissot, and then I'm kind of popping up to like Tudor. So, it, I mean, I've had an Oris, um, Hamilton, um, I don't know. This is just not one that's caught my eye. 
All right. Well, this is a bust. Moving on from Edo. Um, oh, you don't. You don't ask me if I've ever owned one. No, because I know Dorito exactly which three watches you owned. <laughs> yeah, I know Dorito? your whole inventory. No, he he had a previously his corpse oh. previous to the two. Years. Yeah, my my Seiko. That was the only one. Yeah. So in in terms of, I, I'm not going to talk much about this other than it is a weird story. Um, William Wood, right, that does uh, first responder themed watches and has forever, was accused of plagiarism by Isotope. I have no idea why the watch from Isotope, they would think the William Wood watches inspire other than green. I'm actually like, sorry, um, I don't see it. Oh, uh, and then the, the initial post. Yeah. Somebody should let Isotope know that they stole the bezel off of fucking Unimatic. Unimatic. Yeah. So. Um, and then the original IG post that they said they hadn't removed did get removed. So I don't actually know what they said initially, right? And the text doesn't elucidate it as much, but I'm like, I think this is dumb as hell because if everybody's going to start doing that, then you got, there's going to be a lot of people screaming plagiarism. I actually really do think that the T wheel implementation with the fireman bodies here is actually pretty funny. So let me, let me weigh in on this because I had Jose on my podcast and we talked Periscope? and I, yeah, yeah. No, no, Jose from Isotope. I had okay, okay. Periscope as well. He was on my podcast as well. Um, Anyways, so under Loom, there is a an exit guy there in the Loom shot. And it's right there at like the four o'clock. Um and so I don't know, but I did I did read his his article and essentially he said like, Hey, this is something that typically wouldn't we wouldn't wouldn't call out, but you know, essentially it was just kind of like in summary, just like be unique, you know? Um and they were in dialogue. <laughs> You know, where Isotope was talking to William Wood and William Wood was furnishing, you know, some some documents or some, you know, renderings or something that are that go back a few years. Um, but but uh, yeah, so I don't know. that's, that's kind of what I took from it. I don't I, you know, I don't mean to pa I don't I don't know all the details and I don't mean to pan on your guests, but like sure, my first inclination sure. is this is like isotope's not doing themselves any favor because the instant i looked at this i said okay isotope looks like it just like jj said a unimatic um and which i, which I have no problem with but I, it's kind of funny if they're calling out another brand exactly that's the thing it's like how many like how many homage watches like um uh, and then to use the term <laughs> as well it's like um okay that's uh i don't know i thought this was stupid as hell did they give um, you a free watch, Blake? I have uh, a NASA watch coming in. Have you seen their NASA? I still have NASA? Yeah, it's a NASA co-branded watch. That's uh, being mailed to me right now. Do How do you unboxing. get free watches? I want some free watches. <laughs> you just talk to people, man. Hey. Yeah, this is, this is coming Give me in. some free watches, man. I like this. This is cool. It is cool. Uh, I think you plagiarized that NASA. NASA's definitely not theirs. They... <laughs> They um they got the they talked they talked to a lot of people about like um, licensing. So we talked about the NASA licensing on the podcast. Um, oh, we talked about plagiarizing Rowan Blazers here. It's purple. <laughs> I'm sorry. Like I really think they look stupid for even saying it. Uh, Panda. They plagiarized the Daytona. <laughs> um, the I will say the chronograph, the moonshot is actually really cool. There's not like an actual picture of the face, but if you go, I hate to plug my own shit, but if you go back and watch my YouTube video, um, it is a cool watch. Um, I, I will say Jose is really creative because we, we had him on the podcast and we talked for, I mean, it was a long podcast, was like two hours. And then after two hours, like we'll do like a back room, kind of like we do here. And we yep. talked for another two hours and he was just pulling up shit on his computer, like showing us like some of the stuff that he's working on. Um, and I, I will say, like, I have been so impressed with Jose and some of his creativity. Um, I, I, yeah, I mean, you know, I don't have much skin in the game for for this argument, but um, but yeah, I mean, he he did say in his comment that 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 plagiarism is is humbling. Um, so yeah, I, I don't know. I mean, I'm not. Yeah, a I don't know. Guy. It's like I think that the. I'll use actually because we, we talked about uh, Lex Friedman, right? And 
a comment that Ari and I talked about behind the scenes a long time ago with OpenAI and Elon Musk is, you know, Elon Musk just took that lawsuit at, at OpenAI and it's like a petty lawsuit. And he, we know it's petty based on the way he's talking about it. I'm not a big fan of petty accusations between competitors. I don't care who they are, right? Like it, it's a petty accusation. Um, it makes me look at the people who threw the petty accusation differently, right? And in this case, somebody is prestigious Elon Musk. I look at him differently for throwing a petty accusation, right? Yeah. So I, I just think it's petty. That's my own opinion. I don't know these people from either yeah. side. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, I do not look at the watches as remotely close to similar. Uh, I don't haven't seen the loom shot, but again, the Instagram post is down, so I don't know. But the loom shot is literally like uh, it's the exact same icon as what they used on on the um, the William Wood. But well, let's we'll see that. Yeah. Okay, so I can find that damn icon. A million is it? it is a stock icon, I think, or maybe yeah, exactly. Something. So congratulations! It made me think they're even dumber. <laughs> like, uh, yeah, I'm sorry. Like, yeah, congratulations. Um, like great. I said, I mean, I, I this is not this is not my battle. You know, um, I don't have any relationship with Iso with with William Wood. I do have a relationship with Isotope. Um, I'm not trying to put you in a spot. Like I'm not. You're I'm not, not speaking for like, the yeah, president of Las yeah. Vegas here, right? Yeah, I know. I, know. I think it's everyone's entitled to their own independent thought. I don't think you have to agree with you know with everyone. So it it could be another thing that's going on with uh with like Nico Rick Ross, you know, where they just want to get some press, you know, just drum up some bullshit, you know. Um, yeah, there you go. So Watch Pro has this story. Watch Pro covers more business side of things, right? Um, they have this story of the rise of fake, super fake, strength star watches. They estimate 23.3 million fake watches directly in the U.S. Um, and then they have this nice little map where they think they're circulating. So JJ has most of them. What is um, this? What do I have? <laughs> fake, super fakes of the country. Mm. So JJ has most of them. Uh, Baba Hotep has the second amount. Brody, right. keeping it down the down low, has just a couple. I thought Rick and Ross has the most. Yeah, exactly. Rick Ross has the most. And then, and then Robert Wood, who we all knew was a scoundrel, has he's he's way up there. Um, I thought this was kind of a little a little interesting in terms of how big the market gets because we covered this last year kind of extensively. Uh, the number is pretty shocking to me. If that number is even remotely close to twenty three point three million fake watches, that's crazy. That's pretty crazy, yeah. The thing yeah. is, I think a majority of like Rolexes you spot in the wild are fake. Yeah, I would agree. I I I, I really do think they are. It's like I, I I've talked about Top Golf. Is I go to Top Golf for um like watch spotting, right? And a majority of the Rolexes I see at Top Golf are fake. I, I go to the win for watch spotting and like I couldn't fathom the amount of like RMs that you see there. And I'm like, there's no way there's this many RMs in circulation just in general, you know? And like at any day I can see like a hundred RMs at like the win. And I'm just like, okay. I just thought that was pretty stunning myself. Um one last bit of news before we turn to Jax and the topic at hand, which may be related. This I actually was somewhat happy about because I like these watches. Um, the Amir, uh, as is customary before Watches Wonders, they do three tranches of new releases. So this is the second tranche, I think. Um, these are 34 mil, so they're either women or uh, Swiss sized, depending on how you look at it. Um, the Rosé dial here, that pink dial, I think is gorgeous. Yeah, it's nice. Uh, and I like the two tone. That looks um, good too. As well, I just think these are fantastic looking watches. I would love to see that in the light, like in real life. I'm sure it is like a little shine box, you know, like APs or their dials are so good. The tapestry. Yeah. To piecery, whatever. It's a piecery, yeah. Yeah, so good. Yeah, so I'm glad to see we're gonna. So now on the, we're entering. The, I think tomorrow we'll get more releases. So it'll be the second tranche, and then in two weeks' time they'll probably release that like the big hitters, the 
or the second row of big hitters, the white ceramic with the purple vial and stuff like that, I think is in two weeks time. But I really do like these. Um, <laughs> piglet. <laughs> That's so funny. This is the Automere Piglet. Mm -mm. I didn't Automere. notice that he, that he was doing a donkey sound until Nico called it out. I didn't either. I completely missed it. I completely missed the whole because the whole after he dropped the race car thing, and then somebody pointed out to me that his baby mama, right, it trolls him all the time. By the way, she's hilarious. Um, I completely got sidetracked. <laughs> I'm sure we'll see a, a response 2.0 from Rick Ross. I don't know that we will. I hope we do. I don't know that we will. So, all right, that covers kind of the news. And again, because as Hoff says, I'm militaristic. Again, fuck you, Hoff. Um, oh, wait, what do we got? <laughs> um, I just had to do it, you know. Yeah, hold on. Mm -hmm. um, I, I want to make sure I can share this without doxing you. Let's do. I'm going to do some. Oh, All right. Hopefully, this is going to share without doxing you. Yeah, looks good. See what I mean? They yeah. have like a very similar uh, aesthetic there. I mean, even without looking at side by side, I said I I said the same thing you did. It said reminds me of you, Right, and, and you know, it's not like you know oh, a bezel shape is a bezel shape, but it's it has that very uh, oversimplified, almost cartoonistic um, inspiration. But what I look, I have no issue with it. I, I just you know. Yeah. Thought it was a little, a little hypocritical, but we can move on. I just wanted to yeah, show that. Yeah. yeah. So Brody, um, the the uh, uh, Louis reports and Gucci financial reports for three, four years now uh, state the same thing. And I don't know, Brody, if you were a viewer of the channel last year when I talked about the fake market, but like the fact that that the market's so damn big and it can be tied to direct like terrorist activities. You know, the one thing that made Kurt stop, right? And Kurt got was shocked is that the first World Trade Center attack um, was fully funded by fake luxury goods being sold in front of the World Trade Center, right? Holy shit. Um, so, that. like, when you start putting it in different contexts, it, you know, I'm hoping it will change people's sentiment. In my personal life, I've had this discussion with people, you know, that I'm, I'm close to that feel it's totally acceptable. They have a mix of fake and real luxury goods and they upgrade over time sort of thing. I'm like, it's it's not okay. Um, <clears throat> Pelican head hands, is that me? Maybe, I don't know. What's up, Uncle Mikey? Like Lizzo, I don't know what's happening. Um, yeah, we did a whole show on it, uh, Brody. I might actually update the show because the amount of published material from various law enforcement agencies globally one of the most fascinating things to me that was actually a big thing that first world trade center bombing right uh there's this area of of borders that intersect in latin america where the trade of fake watches in particular uh is like directly supporting the muslim brotherhood hamas hezbollah like really 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 um specific to to things that are you know unsavory uh, and the amount of money that's generated that way is pretty insane. So, all right. So now, real quick, Jax, we have to get the smoking update. Are you cleaning your ashtrays? Mm. Yeah, yeah. Somebody asked earlier. So, how's the how's the uh, quitting going? Uh, no, I'm doing good. I I smoked. I'm I'm allowing myself one a day until I run out of the cigarettes I have left because I'm not gonna throw them away. They're nine dollars a pack. You know what I mean? So. I have one pack left in the fridge. I had two. So I'm smoking one a day until they're gone. But other than that, I'm doing really good. So do you have a specific time that you smoke it, or is it whenever you just feel Yeah, like, like if I, like, right, what, 10, five minutes ago now, or whatever, usually when I wake up this time of night, when I get up before I start cleaning the house and shit, I'll go ahead and burn one, and then that's it. The rest of the night, I'm chewing Zens and, and toothpicks like a woodchuck. 
Oh man, I thought it was definitely after your chicken, Sammy. No, 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 no. I because I don't give a shit about food. I know a lot of people always say it's you want to smoke like when you wake up before you go to bed and after you eat something, but for the food thing, like I just don't give a shit. So it, I've never felt like that after after I eat, like I have to have a cigarette. That, that I don't. It doesn't bother me. So, yeah. but I'm down to one a day, man. One a day. It's only been. Um, this is like the eighth or ninth day or something like that, I think, since I started. So I went from two packs a day down to one cigarette a day. Making progress, dude. Making progress. That's awesome, dude. Harm reduction, making progress. Good on you, good on you. Yeah. My grandma on my mom's side, she smoked until her last day, and she left behind like a half carton of cigarettes in the freezer. Mm -hmm. And I never threw them out. And every year on the anniversary of her passing, I'd go visit her, mm -hmm. and I'd light up a cigarette for her. Yeah. One of her cigarettes. Yeah. And just put it there in a little, um, <clears throat> uh, what you call it? Not an ashtray. Incense burners, right? Oh, yeah. yeah. It just burns down slowly for her. I let her enjoy her cigarette while uh, yeah, I right. bring her up to speed. Yeah. Um, <clears throat> before yeah. we hold on real quick, uh, I have not seen that. Uh, Safari Billard's new collaboration at a town GMT one with the gold meteorite is really cool. So I have not seen this. I will look that up before. Uh, the next show on Wednesday, probably, and and I mean, Satori Bill is just knocking out of the park. Um, yeah, amazing progress, dude. Amazing progress. And I did notice you were wearing a watch. Yeah. How about them apples? <laughs> so yeah. give us a wrist check. How's it going? Oh, it's going good, man. Uh, it looks good. It's working for you, Jax. It's working for you. It's California Dow, man. It's the greatest thing ever. Jax is in, in like a week's time. We got Jax down to one cigarette. He's on testosterone replacement therapy and he's wearing watches. Like legit, dude. Look. No, I know legit because I've tuned in to oh, fucking yeah, hot luxury. Some needles? For the first time. Yeah, I gotta give myself, yeah. For the first time ever, I tuned into crappy luxury. And there's Jax talking about somebody offering a free air fryer. Uh yeah, do you want to talk about that? No, because I don't do it because you dox yourself. I know I found exactly on our show where you gave your email address away. Oh, did you? Yeah, I told you you did it. I remember you did it. Okay. All right. Maybe right. I did. So, no, no, not maybe. You did it. Okay. But I don't know how this person got it, though. Because well, they the don't really watch our show. Well, no, they, that person watches every damn show. Oh, okay. All right. Fair enough. Fair enough. Um, so he's you must be talking guy. about an elderly person, elderly Jeff. Could be. That's Could living be. in the villages in Florida. Uh, Brody, <laughs> he's wearing an undone watch that we made on the air. We built it on the air and bought it for him as a gift. Uh, there's a, there you go. There's a lot of... Sorry, man. There's fucking there. Looks there good. Cool. Yeah, there's glare. Sorry about that. Yeah. Did you, did you know the air fryer story? Uh, I heard he was offered one. I don't know if he accepted it. No, I didn't. No, 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 no. I did not accept it. No. That comes um, with strings attached. You know, you got to put out if you get that. Yeah, I don't. I, but what's so funny that I mentioned last night on Crappie Stream is pretty much everybody at this point knows I fucking hate food and I eat the same thing every day. Why would you want to give me an air fryer? <laughs> Just to get in your pants, probably. I, I get, I mean, that's, you know, give me a gift certificate and I'll buy, you know, fucking energy drinks with it. I don't, what the hell am I going to do with an air fryer? Sell it's it, just sell another it. thing for me to clean. <laughs> sell it on the gray market. Yeah, yeah. I have that. I, I took the watch apart, which I, I did. It's in. It's still apart. I put the new band on it, and then I put the strap back on it. I, I like them both. I like them both, and obviously I still want to save up and get that, that one that I showed you guys on stream. But it does fit. I took it. I, I've been playing with it. I took it apart. I put it back together. Like you've got me messing with stuff now, and like looking at strap. It's ridiculous. Robert Wood is yeah, Robert Wood is a Sith Lord of of obscure watches. Is taking Jacks under his wing. Yeah, like um, he's he's sending me stuff in the mail, and I'm playing. With, now I'm taking shit apart, and putting it together, with it. and I just grandpa. wanted to I wanted to say something to Robert because he's he's a fucking sweetheart, and I love him to death. Um, he also sent me a pair of headphones and God love him. 
they have a 3.5 millimeter jack at the end and my iPad is uh, USB type C. So I don't, I can't use them. There is no, there is no plug in for those. So out of wait, wait, uh, your iPad. Yeah. No, you go, you get a uh, 15 bucks. You go on Amazon, you get the anchor, um, the docking uh, thing. Oh, uh, well, no, I already just, because he got them for me and they wouldn't work. So I just, I went ahead and went to Apple's website and I bought a pair of the same kind of headphones, but that have the USB type C plug in at the end. Uh, so I can just plug them directly in. So I have a pair coming. So I just wanted to update him on that. Hmm. But I, yeah, they weren't bad. I think they were like 30 bucks or something on Apple's websites and they made them where it just plugs right into my iPad. So I, I just, yeah. Yeah, they have an adapters and stuff. I bought the, uh, actually I just did this myself because I, I wanted to be able to plug into my phone. Mm. So I bought anchor six ninety nine. I bought, you get two of them. They're USB a to USB C. And then I bought, um, the anchor, like it, what are they called? Those things? It's not a docking station. Uh, it's like dongle, a, a dongle, oh, hub. dongle, on yeah. USB hub. yeah, yeah, USB hub, whatever. And it has a three and a half mil uh, jack. It has USB C, USB A, HDMI. It has everything. Anchors oh. been killing it the past few years with accessories and battery packs. Like, yeah, uh, they yeah. provide a lot of value to quality. Did you get your mail? Fifteen bucks. Oh, I, I haven't got my mail. I haven't got my mail. Not only have I not got my mail. Never mind. I don't want to get into it. I want to stay happy. I was happy. I don't want to get unhappy. Okay. I just <laughs> no, no. I not. I have not got my mail. I have not got checks that are due to me. I've not got my mail. My lawyers have not made progress on. No. Okay. No. This has become like a running thing now. It's like it's just gonna. <laughs> no, I, it, 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 dude. Like I have so many problems. I don't want to talk about them right now. Like I'm okay. losing my mind with. Yeah. Okay. I actually have two watches I would like to look up if, if we could do that. Well, I, so we can do that, but I actually okay. do want to talk about the topic sure. um, at hand, right? Which is, mm. has anybody been in a situation where their watch mattered to a woman, right? Because I've had my watch noticed three times by a woman. And is it the Panerai AD? That's a fucking woman right there. Well, just, okay. uh, I've had a, I've noticed three times by women who don't work at ADs, let's say. Right. Okay. Right. Damn it. <laughs> um the and I found this and I thought this was funny, right? How can you tell the guys wearing a five thousand dollar watch? Wait five seconds and he'll tell you. <laughs> <laughs> All right. I thought that was I thought That's that was pretty, like, pretty funny, right? Yeah. Um, and I'm genuinely curious because the last time happened just the other day. But the first time was much many years ago. Um, I was in the gentleman's club. I think that was the last time I was in the gentleman's club too. Oh. Um, and one of the dancers Ooh. could rattle off every reference number of any brand you can think of, including like AP. Oh. Right. And recognize that at the time I was wearing a 15300. Oh, four hundred were out. Like, could recognize the difference. Wow! And in her industry, that must be very valuable insight and information. Oh, right? sure, yeah. The second time it happened was at a restaurant, um, Del Frisco's Double Eagle. It had just opened in San Diego. Uh, it's been open for a number of years now. It's like seven years ago or not. And uh, the sommelier noticed. Uh, my wristwatch and had a conversation about my wristwatch before we could get to the wines. And the third time, which was just the other day, is that, and this was the most bizarre one, is that a high school age girl going to my daughter's school recognized this watch. Hmm. Of all watches. Right? And she because it was like gear patrol or something. Yeah, teenager. But it was like gear patrol or something and knew immediately. Huh. Like that, it was the 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 bezel was hand engraved and stuff like that. So yeah, shoes before watches is always shoes before watches, shoes before watches, which doesn't help me either because I wear Berluby shoes and nobody freaking knows what Berluby yeah. shoes are. But I actually wanted to hear if this is if anybody has uh, the watches have worked in their favor. Hmm. 
I have gotten some um, some female attention wearing a Cartier tank. Because I think most girls know Cartier and they know the tank, right? So immediately some uh, some resemblance. But but no, no. That's really my only one. A few times. Never, uh, they're always an interesting story. Never straight up good one, but um, one time when I was wearing a Panerai 112, a long time ago, I was out at a outdoor like bar, and this group of girls were smashed. And one girl's going, "I know that watch. That's a really nice watch. That's a, you know," and um, I was just kind of smiling and nodding, and my friend winds up picking up her friend. Who I actually thought was they, they were all good looking, but she was extra good looking. But um, then this other one that I kept saying about the expensive watch goes, "You, oh, she was all drunk. She's like, why don't you take me home? Let's take me home. It was daytime. It was like afternoon. Mm. And I was just like, nah, I'm good, thanks, you know. And she, I was like, maybe another time. She's like, no, I can't another time. Then my boyfriend will find out. And I was like, yeah, no, I'm gonna pass, thanks. Um, <laughs> she wasn't too happy with that. And then I wound up seeing her at the same place a couple of weeks later, and she was with the boyfriend. Oh, it was very awkward. Oh, um, okay. yeah, Panerai 112. And then another time, very annoying. I was at a friend's backyard, um, like barbecue kind of pool party in the summer, and I had on my Wimbledon dial date just. And this girl was so drunk and super annoying. She kept saying, your watch is so shiny. Your watch is really shiny. She didn't say it was nice or anything. She just kept saying it was really shiny. I was like, all right, thank you. Okay, all right, thank you. <laughs> she finally like went away. It was, uh, those are the only two ones I can remember off the top of my head. But. The best thing about these stories is that JJ's stories are always a mix between penthouse letters and king of queens. <laughs> yeah, yeah. <laughs> Very very I like this you... comment from Brody, right? If you're on a first date, don't forget your coaxial escape in a beggar. Describe your 39 royal look royal as the jumbo. If you do, she will return from the bathroom. <laughs> very good. Does it, does it make and you guys really have... uncomfortable when somebody is knowing that you're wearing a really expensive watch? Does it make well, me uncomfortable? Give me one second, Blake, and we're going to go to you in oh, this sorry, mix. Sorry. Um, we got a very generous super chat. And our first race entry, there will be a race tonight. <laughs> The odds are Shit. well enjoyed. Yeah, Jordan, you're, you're mm -hmm. one for one, probably going to win. Very generous $20 in mm -hmm. the US. In my opinion, their acceptance of every rule and this watch hobby survey isn't exclusively male, but watches and sports cars. They usually attract women as much as they attract other dudes that also like watches and sports cars. To that point, the comment that I left on the screen from Sal Girlfriend is Do you know who cared about and This is the same thing with cars. Other guys who obsess about watches and cars, or women who can guesstimate your discretionary income before mm -hmm. you even. Right. My forerunner gets more compliments than any Mercedes I've ever had or anything. They, yeah, that, they dude, they can, they, they can infer your discretionary handiness at home. Dude, my truck, my truck gets more compliments than anything I ever had. Yeah. yeah. Well, mostly I, from you know, dudes, but I have gotten compliments. I no, think it's just like a, a, more, a lot of compliments from women, too. Yeah. I, you know what it is? I think it's because it's just a good, honest vehicle, right? It's not like a trying to show off type of thing where, a woman's embarrassed to say, like, oh, nice car, because she thinks you're a gold digger. Like, if they say it's a nice car and they see it's a Toyota, you know, it's like, okay, we don't, you know. Yeah, I, I was at Lowe's with my truck, and I was loading some things at the back of my truck, and a woman came up, and she asked me what my opinion on power tool brands were because I had my truck. She said, you have a really <laughs> nice truck. You're actually putting stuff in the back of it, and I'm curious. And it was between, for her, it was between, um, DeWalt in Milwaukee. She was looking at this like power tool kit. And I was like, Milwaukee, like hands down, right? That's just my almost anything Milwaukee offers in power tools, not in other tools, but in power tools is better than than most other yeah. contemporary brands, right? They make so, a nice torque wrench. Um in any case, thank you very much, Jordan, for joining Super Chat. So and then going to Blake, since since Jax has no opinion on this matter yet since he's only been worth watching for seven and a half Well, I, I live where the hills have eyes, so nobody here would even know what the fuck a watch <laughs> place is. Yeah, so, Blake, go for it. Yeah, I, um, I think I'd get really nervous, you know, because when, JJ, when you were telling your story, you're like, oh, that's a really nice watch. Like, I would it's really like shiny. That. It was super yeah. shiny. 
I would sh- I would shut down. Like I I like that I know that I'm wearing a nice watch, but I like that I also don't get recognized for wearing a nice watch personally. So says the only guy in the stream whose <laughs> wife is within seven and a half feet of him. Yeah, I don't want anyone to notice me. No one. <laughs> what what'd you, what'd you say? Says the only guy in the stream whose wife is within seven and a half feet of him. Yeah, yes. I don't want any women. No to one notice has ever noticed me for anything I have. <laughs> <laughs> my yeah, my wife. I mean, my, my wife knows what I spend my money on, so she she's like, oh, my wife is starting to pick up on some. Oh, like where the Panerai today, or where the, 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 the you know, like. But I'll tell you a good story. I forgot it just came to me. So I'm with this girl and I take her into my uh my bedroom and um you know I have my uh huh? I said pound town. <laughs> uh the name of yes, yes. <laughs> so we go in there and um I had uh you know on my uh on the dresser I have the Louis Vuitton watch box. You know the watch box, you've seen it all before a bunch of times. So I have it on there. And she goes right over to the watches. And she goes, Oh, my ex-boyfriend was a watch dealer. And proceeds to pull out her phone. You know, you remember this, right? This happened a couple of years ago. Mm. Proceeds to pull out her phone and take a picture of my watch box. Oh shit. And then she sends it to someone. So I said, What are you doing? She said, oh, I'm sending it to my brother's friend. Uh, he loves watches. He owns, um, a, what I, I don't want to get specific, but he's a Rolex AD. Yeah. She sends it to him. It's my Rolex AD. I'm like, are you oh. fucking nuts? <laughs> what oh. if I got so mad? I, and you know what's funny? I never got a watch again from that. Oh, wow. damn. I was like, you sent your brother's close friend. If my brother, if my friend... <laughs> Friend, sister, send me a watch in some guy's room that I was selling watches to. I would never sell him a watch again. And of course, I never got mm-hmm. called for a watch again. You know, I'm just putting that together that I still haven't got a call from a watch from there since then. Oh, is it? And the guy still works there? They own it. Oh, they own. Oh, they own it. Own it. Okay. <laughs> yeah. Oh. So, yeah, he works there then. Yeah. yeah. So, what pissed him off was it like he was looking for watches that he sold you that weren't in your. Or was it? I uh, never mentioned it. Never mentioned it once. Uh, uh, and I never mentioned it. Of course, what am I going to yeah. say like, like, hey, sorry, I sold sold us a Mariner. You, you, I got it from you. Um, I no, I, sold- I think everything I had at the time from him was in there. I don't want to get specific because sometimes they walk. <laughs> so yeah. I don't want to say you know, it could be uh, you know they know you know everyone knows. they go to multiple places, but I'm pretty sure everything I had was in there. Hmm. But what a terrible idea, right? I'm like, yeah. why would you think this is a good idea? You know? Yeah. She was like, I didn't know you went there. I didn't know you went there. Oh, well, God. if anybody's sort of taking pictures of my collection to send to somebody, like, yeah, they're Just getting escorted like, out. Flags, yeah, you yeah. watch what? They're getting yeah. escorted out. <laughs> it happens so quick. Another you know? dog. Like, I forgot about it's... that. Damn. Uh, so, Jack's good. Oh, nothing. We it just triggered. It made me think. that you mentioned shoes earlier about not caring about shoes. So for anybody that does care, I saw that you know the company Hey Dude, right? That makes the slip on shoes or whatever. Yeah. They just came out with the big Lebowski edition Hey Dude. So if anybody wants to be the dude at the bowling alley, they fucking make big Lebowski edition Hey Dudes. I was quite happy about it. Do you <laughs> want order? Uh, no, 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 no. But I just, I saw the photo and uh, it's this chick sitting in a bowling alley, like uh, sitting in the middle of the lane with these fucking hey dudes on. And like, they're, they're pretty, they're pretty dope. So Dude, that's, that's kind of messed up. I just, I just pull them up because. <laughs> Those look like Clark Wallabies. Yeah. Dude, Jeff Bridges character would have so fucking worn those with that sweater. Come on. Yeah. That's the thing is I'm thinking like, am I going to get robbed? How much are they? Uh, yeah, I don't know how much are those. Oh, okay. Oh, look. They have them in yeah. thirteen and fourteen, so I could legitimately turn. Dude, yeah. See the bowling at the, where's? Oh, uh, they don't have it. There's a photo of a girl sitting in the middle of a bowling lane with them on. It was kind of cool looking. I thought you guys would get a kick out of that. The Big Lebowski edition, hey, dude. Because they're fucking called dudes anyway. I mean, it just kind of fits. 
Yeah. <laughs> but yeah. Um, and then we got it, Bill D. Oh. With the dollar nine nine seven. Yeah, they're trying to find if you have money. Yeah, that's. I think that would be the number one uh, uh, case. And then we have Robert Wood with his race entry. Here's the winner. We'll see. We'll see. Odds are good so far tonight. Odds are good so far tonight. Yeah. Oh. But I think you, you at least you have California Dallas. If somebody notices it, at least there's a story. Oh yeah, I mean that's like that's I, that's my favorite thing on the planet. Um, I I was just shown a Rolex that I didn't even know about the other day, the Thunderbird. Yeah, like the pilot watch, I guess, or whatever. Rolex Thunderbird. It looks like a like a date just and a whatever had a baby or something like that, kind of. I, like I, a, I don't know this. It's awesome. I I looked at that and I was like, does that fit me more than a Explorer One? Could, just because of the kind of what they were built for. I really, I you know, depending on the color and stuff. No, you, never, you, saw, you never saw a Thunderbird, Ollie? I well, no. Now that I'm looking at it, I've seen them many times. I never knew it was fucking called Thunderbird, though. Yeah, and that I thought it's so a Turnograph. Cool. It's called. I don't know. It's I don't a Turnograph. Yeah. This yeah. Is a two, it's a colorway of the of the Turnograph. Mm. Well, we're gonna pull up Bob's watches with. Yeah. I think they're I don't like, like, like by the way. 36, though. I think, right? JJ? I'd like to see the turn around. Yeah, come back, 36. You'd like I fucking, to see these come back? I kind of love it. And I'd like I, to see a, a modern turn around come back, not the small yeah. ones. I mean, it would probably fit me. I mean, obviously not all his wrist, but I, I kind of thought it was pretty badass looking. Yeah, the black ones. I did not know these were called Thunderbirds. Yeah. Can we get a big picture of one of the black ones up top there? Black dial? Yeah, I think it's, yeah, it's just this colorway, right? Uh, I thought it was Blake? a blue dial with a red second hand oh. of the turnograph, and that was just what they called the Thunderbird. Hmm. But but what do you think instead of an or still Explorer one? I don't think that for you it's a good idea to get okay. a, a neo yeah, vintage, vintage, vintage watch yeah. right now. Yeah, no, I just all yeah. oh, they don't make them new; they're all vintage. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Oh, I didn't know that. Okay, okay. I just think it's pretty fucking dope looking though. It is. Okay. Yeah, the Explorer one still. I mean, especially considering the Explorer one, the older ones, you can get around 4K ish, like 45. I've seen them trading. Uh, yeah, we're gonna try to shoot for the 39, but for me, but yeah, because of the the Mark II dial with Loom. But I just, you know, I saw that and I thought, holy shit! I just thought that was really cool. Yeah, vintage watches suck to keep up with. Mm. And then uh, the other. So Real okay. quick, we have Brody with a generous five dollar super chat. Thoughts on the ducks? So stocks are soft to be on a carbon white pearl. Uh, this is not the carbon I pulled up. No, it's uh, limited edition ones. It is, and because and I, the reason I know it's not the carbon is not just because he said it's carbon. It's because I literally was thinking I want to buy it as soon as I saw it. Oh, it's not listed yet. I saw it on one of the sites, and I was like, "I want this watch." Hmm. There it is. Yeah, I gave a nicotine toothpick to an underage kid today. That made me happy. Don't do that. Don't don't talk about that shit if you're gonna do it. <laughs> it's a joke. <laughs> it's a joke. He was eighteen. He was 18. Yeah, dude, uh, Brody, I love this watch. As soon as I, I saw it, I had a monogram, a blog watch, something oh, I'm like, I nice. need this watch. How much is this going for? $3,600. Yeah. Is it carbon fiber? Yeah, forged carbon. 4000 quite nice. Oh. I, I really yeah. like this watch. Yeah. You like the white stuff? I think Doxa is a, a big win for me. Like, I, mm -hmm. I love Doxa. I've been looking at the subject for a while. But I just couldn't couldn't do it. Uh, hmm. Do you like stuff like that? That's if it's made out of carbon, clearly it, it weighs like nothing, like an RM or something. Would do you like stuff that light on your wrist? It depends. So, like, summertime, the, yes, this depends on sometimes. So, the like, he square G weighs nothing, but this monstrosity, even though it's all titanium, where it weighs a lot because it's massive, right, right? But that thing's awesome, dude. I, I don't know if I would like this on the wrist. I just know as soon as I saw it, it's the first Doxa that I went. I actually really like the aesthetics of this Doxa. Oh. Yeah, it's cool. I have um, 
going back to Unimatic, I have the the titanium Unimatic, which <clears throat> from from entire the entire watch weighs sixty grams, like everything. And I mean, you don't even feel it on your wrist. And um, I actually, I actually really like it. You know, I really like having a light watch, but then I also like having a heavy watch. So it's just, I don't know. Yeah, I think Appetite. in the summertime it's nice when it's light like that. You know. Yeah, yeah. It's gonna be a nice I summer. I watch. just don't know about either. For me, the carbon and ceramics still make me really nervous. Like you're not buffing a chip out. It is expensive to replace if if something goes wrong, for sure. But this really like this is like what the Breitling Endurance should have been. Yeah. No quartz. There's something. There's something with the endurance, like polymer that they use that they said is like harder than ceramic, which I don't know if I believe, but. Well, so the thing is that you have hardness and brittleness are two separate characteristics. You can have extremely hard materials that are still brittle upon impact um that's my concern is that you have a number of that's why you have like ceramic drill chips and stuff like that that are extremely hard but on impact they chip yeah i have a few ceramic watches and i also have some carbon watches and um yeah i, I haven't i haven't had any issues with it yet. I, I somehow scratched the ceramic watch that I have, which is unscratchable. But yeah, I, I do like them, them as materials. Did um, you scratch it or did you scratch something on it that has gotten into the pores? I'm not sure, but it's just a black gash through the back. I mean, it doesn't look like a, a, an indentation. Like it's not an in. So take some, like... take some blue dial so, um, rub it in there, let it sit for a little while, and then rinse it. And see if it comes, if it like parts of it come out. Yeah, I'll try that. I thought about doing some like poly watch or something on it. That might work too. I don't know. Yeah, like an abrasive. I really do like this. I'd like to look at this. I actually like the look of the steel one as well. I like I the, really, really like to look at this. They have a nice baby blue, like an ocean blue, and then they have the orange one, which I mean, they're all good. They're all so good. So good. I haven't. Already. I haven't bought a doxy yet. I just. I haven't. So. I what size know. is this? Uh, I think it's, it's forty three. Forty two by forty five. Forty two and a half by forty five. Hmm. JJ is buying one like right now. <laughs> How much is? I'm online buying one. How much are they? No. Uh, thirty six hundred. Oh, oh I, I thought it was like some crazy number. Okay. I think. I mean, at that price point. You're not getting anything special for for the movement. You know, you're paying for the nostalgia of Doxa, and um, sure. But but yeah, I I like the sub two hundred. That's a cheap little watch for the money. It's like nine hundred. I don't like the sub two hundred. They're just ass ugly to me. They make the sub three hundreds. I like the sub three hundreds. I like a lot. They make a, a white pearl uh, two hundred as well. Not as nice. Though. I like the sub six hundred as well. That case on the six hundred is pretty is pretty sick. That orange is offensive. Yeah. Six hundred. Oh, there we go. Yeah. I, I, I kind of like the six hundred. Um I, I think the two hundred like has a better case shape than the three hundred. Really? I'm probably the, the only one. It's a yeah, seven, I'm probably the only one who thinks that dollar but... watch right there, bro. You could get the the, the white pearl one. Are like, you sure? Uh, um. Yeah, the other one has that '70s feel. I don't really love to be honest. I like that white pearl edition, but um, I want to see one in real life. Like, I want to see some doxes in real life. I, see, I like this one and the carbon a lot. Well, the 300 is where it started for them. You know, that's the iconic doxa. You can buy the 200 white pearl for for 900 bucks, but it doesn't come with a carbon mm -hmm. case. Yeah, yeah, you're paying for the car. This is sure. just gorgeous, man. That's cool. Yeah, and the white changes it. Click yeah. the, oh, they have different the, colors. Can we see the different colors? Yeah, click the orange and the Tiffany blue one. Yeah, you like orange. orange. Yeah. Mm. 
The white. I, I don't. I don't like any of the other colors. To be no. honest with you. Yeah, me neither. The white's cool. Oh God, that's Lance Armstrong. What about the uh, the black or the gray or whatever it is? No, I really, I just don't. I just don't like. The I don't. I don't like the other colorways. Yeah, the white really makes it pop. Yeah. Yeah. To, to me, this and is. I, like, I bet you this doesn't wear very big either, right? Because you got a lot of case. The dial's not huge. Mm-mm. I don't think it wears that big, but I haven't put one on my wrist. Uh, yeah, I haven't. You can get one for thirty four hundred, brand new on Chrono twenty four. Oh. And I'm sure if you know someone who sells these, like a dealer, you could probably gives you a better deal. This is dangerous, man. I don't have. I do not have the money to spend all this now, and I don't want to risk a carbon. But I'm thinking about it. Hmm. Doxa mm. doesn't have very big distribution in the United States, so I think the only real dealer you can get them through is Watches of Switzerland. Yeah, Switzerland. and uh, but that's Watches is the only one close to me anyway. Yeah. Um, what's the the movement in the carbon one? Can it be serviced or is it? They're Salidas. They're Salidas. They're just Salidas. Yeah, off the, the shelf. The like a seventy five hundred. Hmm. Yeah, okay. they're serviceable. There you go. That's what I always think about first. That's just me. They well, are, they anything are. I buy from watches of Switzerland is going to be serviceable. Mm. Yeah. Can I uh, answer Al twenty nine in the chat real quick? Is that okay? Um, sure. Yeah. Okay. Just. Well, he's asking when we were looking at the Thunderbird watch. JJ probably remembers this too. There was a, there, he was right. There's a band that was called the Fabulous Thunderbirds. He thought it was the Glorious Thunderbirds. But there's also a wrestling tag team from the '80s called the Th- the Thunderbirds. You remember that, JJ? Uh, I'm trying to think. Well, the cool thing about while you're thinking about it, the the cool thing about the band part, the Fabulous Thunderbirds, and they kind of had one big hit. It was a song called Tough. Enough. Now that, you think, are you thinking about the Fabulous Freebirds? Oh, it's the Freebirds. Yes, the the wrestlers. Okay, yeah. Sorry about that. But there's yeah, okay. okay. There's a band though, and the song "Tough Enough." The lead singer was um, who's the crazy good guitar player that died in the plane crash? Um, Stevie Ray Vaughan, the lead singer of the band that has the song "Tough Enough." His brother is um, the singer of that band. Is Stevie Ray Vaughan's brother? So that's kind of cool that they they had a hit song, and his brother was Stevie Ray Vaughan. So. And Buddy Roberts and Terry Gordy. Yeah, the Freebirds. I I knew it was fabulous. Yeah, 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 yeah. So that's kind of neat. That was like the '80s, right? Yeah, the '80s. 90s, yeah, yeah. They came out to like rock music and shit, and yeah, yeah. it was yeah. Michael Hayes. Yeah. Yeah. There you go. Doesn't there say you. how much it weighs. Ollie's all in on this fucking carbon watch. <laughs> I'm not buying shit. I got so many watches I want to sell. I actually, I just posted a couple up. That uh, no, I could, I couldn't if I wanted to, dude. I couldn't. Four thousand dollars, I couldn't right now. Mm. Like if I wanted to, I couldn't. But I, I'm really intrigued by by this watch. It's a really good do, looking watch. Do we get this, by the way? Oh, uh, yes, yeah, I was gonna go. So okay. Brody did answer it. So Kevin Kim, dollar ninety nine. Thank you very much, Kevin Kim. This is Docs or the Aqua Racer Diver Full Loom. Um, I don't know about the Aqua Racer. Uh, the stock similar thing. look. Full loom. Well, it, it, you know, he's he's asking, would you get this or the Aqua Racer Diver, the full loom one? Oh, similar I, look. I won't buy a, another tag. I had two tags, and as much as I want to get like a, a good Monaco, both of my tags died within the first year, and the service was uh, uh, sub subpar. It was very similar to my Vermont experience. Oh. Um, like it will take a lot for me to buy another Vermont, and it will take a lot for me to buy another tag. Hmm. Hmm. So do they all? This all they all have that green loom. I'm assuming. Yeah, they all have the the same variation of a green okay. or blue loom. Okay. <clears throat> it's cool, man. It's cool, man. Uh, what? Who's the? The, the the watch the two watches I, I asked if we could pull up or whatever one of them it'll make sense who's the guy that ripped everybody off for tons of money in the stock market the famous guy <laughs> Bernie like, Madoff yes so his this has obviously been a while back but I just recently saw it they put a bunch of his watches up for auction and there was a Rolex that I'd never seen before that belonged to him I wanted to see if we could find it. I don't even know what the hell to call this thing. It's a white dial with like two small dials in the in the middle of the like 
I don't even know. It was gold, yellow gold. Um, uh, hang on here. No. No. No, this guy, it, uh, he came into Pawn Stars with it. You know the show Pawn Stars? He came into... Uh, oh, was it the Malta? No, it was the Rolex. Yeah, no. It, it... Hold on, I think I know. Yeah, Pawn Stars. Just, right there. Wanna, play, real quick, I just want to get Kevin, he wanted to know if we could pull it up. I think we just had it up before. Uh, I just want to give my opinion. I think the docks uh, is nicer. I like the docks better. Yeah. Um, I think it's got a little bit of a cooler character. There it is, right there, JJ. Up. Uh, oh, the but no, back up. Keep going. Keep going. Right there to the right. Uh, the 1930s left. Chrono on Pawn Stars. Yeah, that that that's a Rolex. Yeah, but I don't want to play Pawn Stars. But, no, no, I just there's an article down. A, yeah, I've never seen a Rolex like that. Yeah, no, yeah, so right but the, okay. the the links wouldn't load. That's the point. Want to pull up photo bucket links? Oh, okay. Yeah. Hmm. Yeah, I I didn't know that. Uh, I've never seen one look like that. And uh, there, you, yeah, 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 that thing. That's kind of cool, no? No. No. I hate it. I'm no. sorry. <laughs> I'm okay. Sorry. No, I Rolex, mean, is, Rolex is a sports watch, waterproof sports watches to me. I don't know. Yeah, this, Rolex never, even, this is like wrong even for the vintage air. Like this two, this two register, like the registers are way too far apart. Uh, this is like me buying Nike dress shoes. Oh, okay. I got you. Um, That's just well, how I feel about it. Anyway, I don't know. No, I feel like that. Kevin Kim, thank you very much. Uh, I'm still going for the Doxa, dude. And then we have Ira with two euros is the, the Explore 140 worth the money. It is easy to sell. So the Explore 140 mil, um, it is easy to sell. Uh, I don't, you know, it's not going much above retail, if at all, right now. You're probably going to lose money, uh, but it's easy to sell. But you lose a couple hundred bucks at least if you sell it wholesale for a quick, you know, to get out because they're going maybe 500 over retail, 1,000 over retail tops. So you're probably going to sell it at either what you paid up to like minus yeah. 500. Mm -hmm. All right, guys, on that note, I'm heading out. You guys have a good night. See you later, I get some rest. Oh, see you, buddy. Enjoy. The forty is the, the the new size, and so you're gonna have to get it. I think at retail. We're going um, for the thirty nine. Oh, he's top. Sorry, you're answering the super chat. Sorry. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> sorry. 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 Okay. I like it. I've tried it on, and uh, I like it better than the thirty six. Personally, I know the thirty six is like the the size right for the Explorer, but. I mean, I wear a 40 um, Submariner and a Datejust 41. And uh, I think Explore 140 is going to watch. Yeah. I, I think that I was trying to pull up watch analytics. I don't know why I was having trouble with the site. But yeah, you're not going to. It's easy to sell. You're not. You're, you are You may break even on it, though. But that's about it. I'm so excited for that. Jordan, Neo, you guys have a good night. And JJ, thank you for coming on, Don. Um, Yeah, this God is, loves this is when you. buy because you love, you know. Yeah. Oh, sorry. Yeah. That's dude. Ugh. It's not a California dial, but it's its own thing. <laughs> it's a high risk according to what Chuck charts. Oh my God. Yeah, but you don't understand my uh, my feelings for this California dial. It's it's probably unhealthy at this well, point. I'm, I'm talking to Iris question. It's different. You want it because you want it. It's different. Yeah, yeah. Let me get Iris entry into the race real quick. Make sure I lose track. I don't know if it'd be easy to sell Ira because um it looks like there's a ton of them on the market. Mm. So Yeah, no it, it it it's noting like there's a ton unsold. 
Yeah, I think that's where the risk factor comes in. I mean, hmm. yeah. Yeah, this is something you, you buy because you love, not for any other reason. I'm going to go back to, to something I'm loving right now. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I need to I need to get hands-on with Doxa. So I, I tried to get them at Watch of Switzerland, and you have to pay for it before they'll even bring it in. And I'm like, eh, I don't know. Oh, my Watch locations actually have it. Oh, really? We'll have a bunch of Doxa. But we are joined by... Daniel, timely behavior. What's up, buddy? Oh, hey, hello, man. hello, hello, hello. Hey, how we oh, doing? Which okay, Sorry, I had a bit. Saying, uh, had a, no, I had a frog in my throat. Behavior. No, no, no. I had a frog in my throat. Just it's, <clears throat> it's something. It's stuck. It, no, it's something stuck. Oh my god! Here oh, we go. oh, here we go. Here we go. Stand back. What's up, buddy? What's how you doing? Good, good. Uh, how you been? No, I'm fat and sassy. I'm getting there. I actually feel so much better. Like when I see. The people I see, Neo, I see Brody, I see Robert Wood, you know, all these people, Kevin, all these people in the comments. I always feel better when I'm on the streams, like no matter how bad it is, it's been. So, and um, I mean, it makes it a, a lot easier to tolerate Blake as well. So, <laughs> yep. Jack awesome. Has, I didn't get picked on for once. That's great. No, man. I'm not picking on you. No, no, because Jack's, I, 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 I know that you've been, you've been me. under a fire from, from Curly. Uh, and by the way, I think you just need to learn how to deal with it because Curly is is fucking. Horrible. He's a fucking teddy bear. Don't worry, Curly's a big. Uh, I found teddy my bear. I found my way to deal with it. So, it's all good. so, so we're yeah. talking about was it the Explorer Forty? I think I just saw. A... Yeah, the Explorer Forty. Somebody's asking it's if it's worth the money, right? Um, yeah. What do you guys think? Is it worth the money, Explorer Forty? Well, it depends. I mean, the question was, and uh, Ari, you don't have the super chat again if you want to add to the question. Right? Is it easy to sell? It is easy to sell, but you're gonna maybe break even if you buy the retail. Maybe. Mm. Yeah. Whereas, whereas if you get a thirty nine, you'll you might even make money on it depending on how low you get it. Yeah. No, that's not true. much. Not much, but you'll make a, a few hundred. Well, yeah, and the look difference is minuscule. Like, if if you get a Mark II yeah. dial, it both have loom, and yeah, it's, it's the crazy. if you if you look at the Mark II dial, it's got loom. If you look mm. at the forty compared to the thirty nine, there's some dimensional shift there. So the dial's bigger on the forty. The case is smaller in a way, which then like it's 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 pretty much it feels in proportion with the thirty nine, but they're just different. I yeah, actually so, when I put the thirty nine on my wrist. It feels notably different than the forty. It's it's like yeah, but it's like what they did with the forty one and the forty on the what do you call it on the the sub. It's a similar thing they've done. Hmm. I was playing around with the forty not long ago, and I've got the thirty nine, but I've got the Mark one, so I don't yeah. have the loom. We got some Blake Sims in the chat tonight, and Neo was in here or was so to my buddy. What's up, Neo? Yeah, so Neo was in here. I'm good, but Kevin Kim. I love the fact that. After years, people still call me Ari. Nobody ever calls Ari Ali, but people call me Ari. Yeah. I don't know if I prefer the Daltex on 30. 40 crown looks better. Than 30. Yeah, 100%. The, the, there are differences to the watch. I'm just saying, like, overall, aesthetically, I mean, it's not like, I don't know. It's it's not like they've they've made leaps and bounds changes to the uh, to the Explorer 1. And, I mean, if you look at it, over time, over its entire history, I think the biggest change that it, that was that was ever made to the Explorer One was after the ten sixteen. That was like the biggest change it's ever had. Didn't the new one they have a, a new case on it too? Yeah, but I mean, if you put it compared to the thirty nine, you put them side by side, and you glance at them. Yeah, they look you know, identical. Okay. What what's what's the difference? It's not until you fit it to your wrist that you feel the difference and. You, you know, mm. you get closer looks at it. Otherwise, it's a very similar bl bracelet with the same kind of clasp. The dial is similar, very, very similar, if not the same. Uh, the handset's different, but it's the same looking handset. They're just thicker and longer or whatever. They hold a bit more loom as well. It's still got the Rolex, 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 Rolex around the, the chapter ring. It, I mean, it's, it's different, but it's not like massively yeah. different. Well, I mean, Rolex does a good job of like when they have a winner, they don't they don't mess it up too much, right? I mean, yeah. If you go to the sub from the fifty five thirteen onwards, like 
they're subs. It's a quintessential sub. Like they have a yeah. mess it up. So what what are, what projects you got going on right now, man? You've always got interesting vintage projects going on. I've got well, I just finished or sort of we'll call it finished for now until I learn how to do electroplating. I finished a uh, a vintage Tissot. Um, it's a late thirties um, tank watch. So it's the T twenty. Um, it was a non runner. It was it was busted to shit pretty much. Uh, so I got it, replaced one of the parts on it, serviced it. Uh, regulated it, got it to four seconds a day. Then um, I had to find new crystal because the crystal on it was yellow from age. Like over time, old crystals just, I think it's a chemical they use. They just turn yellow, very yellow. Uh, I managed to source an old Longines uh, glass crystal that I had to shape, I guess, to fit. Um, but the curvature and everything, everything matches. It's it's perfect. Did you use a drum? And the handset... No, 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 no. I did not use the Dremel. I'm not licensed to use this piece of equipment. I think the Dremel joke um, predates Blake. Oh, wait, we lost Blake. 100%. Oh. Now, he heard Dremel and he heard the voice, and it scared him off. He just fucked off. He goes, that guy's on, I'm out. He didn't even look to see if he jumped on. He just <laughs> said, no, no, Higgins on, I'm out. Fucking see you later. Poof, gone. But, um, yeah, Crystal, I, um, I, you know, it's, it's glass. I used a very fine sandpaper to, to get it to the right shape and, and fit it um and the handset it, it's radium and some of the radium loom was falling out and that's dangerous shit to muck around with so uh we got rid of the radium and we put super lumen over in there and we aged it with um you know some coffee and some yellow food coloring and very non-toxic stuff that won't kill me so for anyone that wants to frig around with radium the safest way to do it is to drop the hands in a little container of isopropyl alcohol and let it just sit there and get right into it so it's soaked in. And while it's still under the alcohol, so it's not like, you know, it's it's completely submerged, get a couple of like toothpicks or what I like to use, you know, the kebab sticks because they're longer, so I don't have to like get near the shit. And yeah, and scrape them all off. And uh, get rid of all the radium off it, take them out, run them through the ultrasonic in a separate isopropyl alcohol container, and then they're basically radiation free. Hmm. Fucking Mr. Wizard. And because you, well, because they're submerged, right? So if you just started scraping at them, you're going to make dust. If you breathe it in or ingest it or any shit, you're, you're pretty much fucked, right? So let's, let's keep it safe here. And oh. uh, let's keep it under the, under the, the solution and, and do it the right way and not die. So. And gloves at Dude, all times, you know. And... Go down Antique Alley in Florida. Buy yourself some old radium glassware. Drink milk out of it every day. You're not going to die. You'll be all right. Yeah, I'm already fermented anyway. No, no, it's I, I get it, but I also don't want to look like end up looking like one of the fucking radium girls either. Like you know, they look That's like true. fucked up. Fair enough. Anyone right, that sure. doesn't look like you you... Google the radium girls. Oh. oh no, no, that's not a picture I want to pull up. Hmm. Oh, what no, no, like, I didn't say for you to pull it up. You... I was saying anyone that's interested, go look at it. No. Uh, before you drop, Blake, I was saying, do you know the, the Dremel story, story? No, I don't. Nope. Okay, so you didn't laugh. Oh, um, oh the Dremel. You know who, who Higgins is, though, right? No, I don't. What? Okay, no, don't, none of this please, is please. No, no, don't, don't tell him anything. He's a virgin when it comes to Higgins. Don't ruin his life. Leave him alone. <laughs> we won't share the VLC play history. We got Brian today. Oh, he got his new G-Shock Square. Um, the dude, I, everybody needs a G-Shock Square. Like at any at any price point, the G-Shock Square is a must-have. As far as I'm is that what RD has? The red one. Uh, he has G-Shock Square. Yeah, the black. Yeah. So. Yeah. The the everybody needs one at, at, at any price point. They're fantastic freaking watches. They are the apocalypse watch. Um, can we possibly look up that one other watch that I wanted to see? Or, sure. uh, I don't know. You'll have to help. So you remember we looked up the the Breitling, um, the emergency watch, the, you know, the, the the one where it has the the beacon. You can pull the pin and they'll come find you. So yeah, yeah, I know that one. Okay, so. The new one is like a combination of like digital watch and whatever regular watch combined all in one thing. But I, the vintage one, which I also saw on Pawn Stars, like the first time they came out with that watch, they said it was in 95. So 
the yeah. original the original one um is actually a really good look look and watch there's no digital bullshit mixed in with the dial like it's just uh it looks like almost like a regular brightling aside from this like emergency pin on the side of it but it's it's a really cool looking watch a guy brought one in that was never yeah, sworn yeah i just thought i just wanted to see if we could find it like one of the older ones because they look very different than what the current one looks like on Brightling's website. I think you might be talking about so, the aerospace, Brightling Aerospace. Maybe. Yeah, I think it might be the. It wasn't one. an emergency. The emergency has always had a digital display. Yeah. Yeah. The no. aerospace is, it looks kind of very similar to the emergency. Okay. But it still has a pin you can pull. Mm -hmm. uh, I don't think so. No, no. This, I prob this was on Pondstar. I watched it today. The guy came. It still had the whole box with the little test beacon thing in there. Like It looks like a little black box that you can test the watch to make sure the beacon's working. And this thing was all dial. No digital shit in the dial. And on the side of the, of the case, there was literally like a little, it looked like an extra crown that you yeah. had to screw and pull. And it would send the okay. rest of the and Yeah. So yeah it I, is an emergency for sure. Yeah, hundred percent. But there's no digital in the dial. It's uh, it had the the typical regular Breitling dial with the three smaller dials in the middle. Um, hmm. Yeah, it was awesome looking. I'd never seen one like it. Look at them. I'm finding that. But they said it came out in '95. It was when the first time they released the. So I don't know if it was a, a model from that year. There we go. There's one on watch finder. Oh, it is. It's an emergency chronograph. There you go. Thank you. I don't know yeah. all the terms. You know that. I don't know all the terms. Well, you, you, had, know, you, you said it had the other dials. I knew it was a chrono. Yeah, right? yeah, okay. Yeah. Gotcha. Yeah. Gotcha. But yeah, there's no digital stuff, which I think makes it look like shit. But when you look at this one, if you can pull it up, it, it actually <laughs> just still looks I, like a cool Breitling. Lovely. I got it pulled up if you want me to. Ooh. Oh, I had it pulled up, but I hadn't shared my screen. I'm sorry. Yeah, yeah dude. There, there you go. That's a nice panda one. I got the white dial one pulled up. Oh, okay. looks. So you can share Fucking your screen like you do if you want. Yeah. Yeah, let's see it. Supposedly, it's like a $50,000 fine if you pull that pin and there's no fucking emergency and I want to pull it so bad. But what's your definition of emergency? Well, that's a good point. Yeah. I mean, oh, yeah, look at that. Like like if it's if it's a really like 45 degrees Celsius day here in Sydney and McDonald's see? are out of fucking, uh, you know, the, the frozen Coke. I mean, do I pull the shit or what? Yeah, the, see the little black box to the right, and the yeah, see the little with the speaker looking grill in it. That's yeah, that's what I saw on uh, whatever. Didn't, just, didn't Richard Hammond have that on um, on uh, what was it, Grand oh, Tour yeah. when they stranded him oh, in the Grand middle Tour, of yeah, the Grand snow Tour, or yeah. something? I love that thing. I think that is just wicked that it actually has an emergency beacon like you, that. You, I think you, you've been smoking and having too much caffeine. <laughs> you you have a super chat. Um, I'm announcing it for you. We got Uncle Mikey, JJ actually gave me a G-Shock. I want another metal yeah. Oh, nice. 3G. 3G is where it's at. Yeah, oh, you hate this thing? Really? Yeah, really? Mm hmm Oh, okay. It's pretty Invictor-ish. Like solid. Well, that's the thing. It's garish. It's garish. Well, the one no, that I saw in Pondstar. Look at me, was... though. I can barely dress myself. I look, I'm an ugly fucker. So, I mean, I have no sense of style. The... The one that I saw had like a greenish time. blue dial. Uh, it was, it, uh, but I don't know. You know, it would probably be hard to find that one. I don't know, but it was a very. I just think they're neat, man. Uh, yeah, you yeah. You wanna you wanna see some of the things I've been working on? Yeah, you were saying before. Yeah, yeah, that'd be great. I always like to see what you're working mm -hmm. on because there's not many of us in the community that can. Nothing, oh, nothing yeah. in it. Nothing in a massive price range here. But I mean, I did some watchmaking shit. So that's awesome. All right, so uh, I don't know how well you can see, but this is a Tissot C-Star. This is a 60s C-Star automatic. Um, that was fucked. I brought it back to life. Um, yeah, so that one's that one's a, a winner winner again. Like it's living it again. Brand new, dude. Yeah, yeah. Nah, not not brand new. The dial blue Tissot and blue Omega vintage dials for some reason they. Um, they start to fade a little bit, eh? Anyway, this is what I'm going to be. Well, my daughter wanted this one, so I've given it to her. I was going to sell it, but I gave it to her. Um, Dad, I like the blue. Can I have? Yeah, all right, whatever. This this is the um, the Tissot tank. This is the T20. So is it? Are we ticking at the moment, or do we need a wine? No, we need a wine. 
Um, so this was on a like a shitty metal bracelet. Um, the case was pretty fucked up. You, I think you showed that one off last time when you had first gotten it. Yeah, non non runner glass was yellow. So four seconds a day it runs out now after a good service and repair. Um, runs really well. I mean, really well in all positions. It's running that it's well. A random hobby to pick up, dude. This would not be my first choice. <laughs> I like watches. I liked it that much. I thought, you know what the thing is, when you when you bring one of these old ones back to life and, you know, like this would have been in someone's drawer or someone would have put it in the bin after they would have gone, this shit doesn't work, see you later. But to bring it back to life, I mean, you know, it, it's it's a good feeling, yeah? And then I've got a, it's a Seiko Belmatic. This is from 1968. Now, I'm not good enough to work on like service this thing completely because it's a, Automatic day date with alarm function. So there's just too many complications there for me. I can do automatic day date, but the alarm on this shit uh, extra, it's a bit much. I've never done an alarm before. But with this one, uh, my watchmaker worked on it, gave it back to me, and um, the the um, the quick set date stopped working after a period of time. So I've opened it all up again. Taking a dial off, redone the quick set date on it, and that's up and running again. So I did that one today. I was just fucking around for half an hour or so and got that one that's going. Cool. Um, so the quick set works now. It's a uh, see that pusher. So there's the crown and there's a pusher. That pusher, when you pull it out, it's for the date. But as you, it's got three settings. There's right up against the case. There's middle, and then there's out. Out is for the alarm. Um, in mm -hmm. and like all the way in to middle as you push and pull it, it changes the quick set like it, it's a quick set date for it right so that's how it works what's this feel like working on a monaco timely no fuck no um <laughs> a because uh the like, depends on the monaco but i'm not going to work on a chronograph i've never worked on a chronograph yet so it's not my uh my bag i'm, I'm slowly incrementally working my way through complication the first chronograph I, I plan on working on is one of those vintage mechanical wine chronograph Swiss ones because they're less complicated than the rest. Um, so if I'm going to work on one, I'm going to work on an easier one. I'm not saying it's easy, but an easier one. Um, and then I'll start to work on something a bit more, you know, like a 7750. But the Monaco has the, was it the Dubois Duprat or Dubois yeah, Duprat? Yeah. Yeah, module, and there are. Uh, if you don't know what you're doing, you can really fuck one of those up. And if it's the vintage Monaco, even worse. Fuck that. No way. Thank you very much, but no thank you. Uh, because they're about as as um, durable as rice paper. So, nope. I got rid of all my watches. I have those modules on them because it's just a pain in the ass. And I looked at the AP, like the rubber clad. Yeah, like, yeah, you know, that one's got the fucking module. And it's just like Dude, the AP, the APs, their their record with the modules is like oh and three hundred at this point. Yeah, so my my skill me. like for, just for Robert there because he's saying do you want to work on a on you know like one of the 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 bitchier of chronographs. Uh, my my current skill level, I guess, uh, anything that's mechanical wind or automatic with a day or a day date function, no problems. At this stage, I haven't really run into one that's that's given me any trouble. Um, I'd like to try an alarm function next. That would be fun. Um, uh, then you, I'd like you, to what try. You just said reminds me of something. So Brody, he gifted me my daughter a watch. My daughter's fucking monopolizing it right now. Uh, it's a Seiko yeah. mod, um, turtle. It's day date. Normal turtle, except that yeah. has both the kanji and the English, and it's interchangeable, right? So yeah, yeah. Uh, but it, so the only other turtle I owned was English only. There wasn't, it wasn't interchangeable. I'm trying to figure out how the hell that works, because when it rotates, it never goes across the English day. English no, there's so compares. so there's there's one of the discs, one of the wheels inside, right? You they've so what it is right for for the day once it goes around twenty four hours there's a wheel inside there's a disc and it's got a like a pin or a marker on it and it'll flick the day across so once you've once you've set it to either the kanji or the standard English it will automatically turn it to that certain point yeah the same double distance. click yeah. mean, but the question so, so is, it's what oh, I'm yeah. rotating the other turtle I have right the spacing looks the same. So it doesn't look like it's, it's probably not. The, there's got to be something different, right? So one wheel, it's going to have, um, 
Like, to be honest, I haven't worked on the Japanese ones, but it's the same thing with the Swiss. The amount of, of distance between or the amount of teeth, there might be double the teeth. I don't know, but there's there's something in it that will make it move in the same distance. Yeah, that's all it is. It's something simple. So with with the kanji and the English, right, It'll you'll, you'll preset it onto the one you want and it moves a certain distance. So it's always going to be on the English. Or conversely, if you set it to the kanji, it's always going to move onto the kanji. That's how they work. They're, they're a very that's simple probably, setup. It's not going to... Compared to a regular turtle, I don't know. It just feels like it has to have a different... What the... I can't... Jackson, what are you fucking cleaning? <laughs> my shoe on my keychain? The Air Mags. Okay. The Nike the Air Nike. Mags. He's happy, Doran. Jackson's happy. Leave him. Wait a minute. Yeah, Jackson's my, uh, happy. Fuck it. Leave, leave him alone. Nike. <laughs> Jackson's happy. Leave him alone. Nike Air Mags from Marty McFly. <laughs> yeah. Isn't that cool? Yeah. Yeah, that was pretty cool. That's fucking dope, dude. It even says wait a minute, it even says mag on the back. Yeah. With 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 any any date or day wheel, all it is is a wheel with a bunch of teeth that have a pusher, like like a like an arm, and there's a spring. That's pretty much all there is to it, and it all gets held down by by like a plate in a way. So as the wheel turns around twenty four, right, like twenty four hours, when it gets back to, to midnight. That wheel has like a little arm. It catches on one of the teeth. It drags it across, right? And then once it gets to a certain point, it clicks over on that pusher arm and that spring just basically holds it all in place so it doesn't half do it and it doesn't go too far past. It stays where it needs to stay. The spring is basically what keeps it all in place. The the arm, the pusher arm, not the wheel, is for when you quick set it. What it does, it pushes on the teeth Right, the spring gives resistance. It pushes on the teeth and it knocks it that one over. That's all it does, and it just returns back. The spring keeps it in place because the spring is like an arm in itself. It's got like a, yeah. a right ang- right angle on it, and it fits in the teeth. Yeah, it, they're they're very simple when you see one and you you play around with one. You're just explaining it's a bit of a bitch. No, no, I I get it. Right, if the well, question it runs off the is, hour wheel, yeah. I don't know why this turtle is different than other turtles, and it must it, they they must I have. I'd have to see it. The teeth they must have like double the teeth or something to that effect to make it rotate yeah, it's it's something like that um so what it'll do it's you you set it to english for example and as it rolls around 24 hours it'll catch on to the inside of the the wheel the teeth and the wheel and it'll move it to a certain point that certain point is going to be obviously past the english that's on now past the kanji and onto the new english so there's going to be double the set of teeth there probably because it's got to catch the kanji as well. So it's going to go click, click and move it across. When you want it on the kanji, you quick set it. So it's going to skip tooth one, tooth two, onto tooth three. And it's going to go, cool, now you're on kanji. So then when it rolls around to 12 o'clock, it's going to skip the two teeth and stay on kanji again. It's just going to advance to the next one. So it didn't have to be like, they didn't have the modern internal part. They can just yeah, it's it. it's probably going to be that I've, I I don't really work on Japanese watches much, but from everything that I've seen across Swiss watches, that's pretty much the way that they all work. The the wheel that runs off the day is a twenty four hour wheel, just like the one that runs off the day, and they all run off the hour wheel. So once the hour wheel advances, you know it's moving the twenty four hour wheel. Once the hour wheel does does like you know. 20 like you know 24 rotations it's advanced that um the 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 day or date wheel enough that it's done it's 24 hour rotation the little arm presses on the tooth the tooth goes and moves the wheel around which clicks on the spring and the quick push arm and that's it so i have a favor to ask you daniel okay all right go on whatever First I know, is whatever. everybody yeah. told stories of if a woman ever noticed your watch Right, if yeah. you have that story. The second is, I am going to wind down. It's two fifteen here. We're going to run the race, and I'm wondering if you wouldn't mind calling the race as Piggins. <laughs> All right. So, has a woman ever noticed my watch? Uh, I think once. Yeah. Sorry, I was wearing my Tudor Black Bay, and this was the first Black Bay I had. And it was same. Doesn't matter. Same shit. Forty one black dial, black bezel kind of thing. Um, I had it on the Bond NATO. And I was at the petrol station paying, and she was, I don't know, she, older lady, she would have been like your mum's age kind of thing, you know what I mean? Mm-hmm. And she noticed the watch, she went, oh, that's a lovely watch, what's that one? Because, I, you know, I, it's giving me ideas, I might get one for my son. And I said, I explained what it was, and she went, oh, fuck, like, no, nah, that's a bit out of my price range. 
just thinking, you know, oh, a few hundred bucks, I'll get it for my son. Yeah, no. Um, so that's the only time a woman, and I, I'm, I'm assuming that's not the kind of uh, no, but that's fine. Yeah, you want the yeah, action you want. House letters version of the stories. Yeah, yeah. Um, I've never <laughs> had some, you know, some woman come across and go, "Oh, I like your watch. Let's go to bed." Uh, no, that doesn't happen. That's bullshit. Uh, guys, notice your watch more than women. Trust me, and you don't want that shit. Yeah, um, no, uh, well, maybe you do. Um, and if we're gonna do the race as as piggins, I'm going to um, I, 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 I'm going to have to uh, get into character uh, to <laughs> to um, to to call the uh, race. But I need to uh, get my screen a little bit bigger here because uh, yeah, 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 yeah. I need to see. Yeah. Can I show Blake this real quick? I'm good. Yeah. As long as it's not oh, Higgins, anything okay. that's all right. Oh, okay. I just going to show you because you noticed it. So they even come in a mini shoe box, oh. bro. That's, that's the, yeah, that's yeah, the original Little shoes. Air Max yeah. Shoe box. So it's, yeah. Uh, it says magnetic uh, anti gravity. Anti yeah, anti gravity. And then it's got, um, there's two in each. Yeah. So that's hey, kind of dope, right? Mini, mini McFlurry. Yeah, ain't that cool? I just thought that was kind of neat. So I, I, I've lusted over those shoes for so long. Right, me too. My cousin has a pair of those shoes. He won them. There was oh, a competition, that's... and um, he managed to win the Marty McFly shoes, and he wore them at his wedding, all glowing and shit. It was funny. They're worth like anyway. fifty grand now, aren't they, or something like that? There, there's two versions. There's the Air Mag versions, which yep. Nike released, and then there's the Back to the Future novelty ones, which well, sell for a few hundred no, no. dollars. He, he right. got the he got Air the Max. Nike ones. Yeah, but yeah, and I said to him, I said, I said, where, where do you push the button or call it or whatever to to automatically adjust? And he goes, yeah, they don't do that shit. I'm like, oh come yeah. on, man. Where, yeah. where is it? Twenty twenty what now? Yeah, yeah, dude. That those were so when he put those on power laces, like that's the greatest thing ever. It was supposed to be 2022, I think, like in Back to the Future when they came in. Yeah, and, no. You it know. sucks. Yeah. We're still burning fuel here. We're not <laughs> members of Fusion. No, yeah. no, nothing. Jaws yeah. 56, nothing. No, no, no. Yeah, no the bananas. Sports, if we just yeah. had the sports almanac, we'd all be fucking wearing, you know, whatever. <laughs> so <laughs> so who, who do we have in this race here? We have uh, quite a few people. We've got Jordan. Oh, what is the next Christ. gentleman's name? What? Do, how do I say this word here? Bill Add Dill. Add Bill me, because I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to do Dill. a little super chat real quick. we got oh, Tom, I will Robert, you, Brody, I'm shocked Kevin, here that Ira, and Uncle Mickey. 2016 version of these shoes. StockX is showing the last sale for $77,000. Yeah, yes. Expensive. Uh, there's Please. another app called the Goat app, the Goat Shoe app, G O A T, and they uh, they may have a pair on there that someone's selling. Um, I'm sure eBay does, but yeah, they're up there. Who's the last like five minutes with me? So that like, I'm not, I shouldn't be allowed to buy this shit because I'll fuck them up in ten minutes and make someone cry. So oh, dude, but still, that's can you imagine just wearing those? That's oh, that's awesome. Super chat inbound. And we wear them, have... fuck them up, and someone will be saying, "Great Scott, you ruined the shoes." So let's. Not Great Scott, yeah. If no, you just break. have Delorean, and... we have lonely wrist. Ooh, yeah, that's me. We got we oh, got them in, so we got lonely. eight people. Odds are good. Odds are good. We're gonna do thirty-three okay. seconds. I like the odds we'll here. Reduce the volume to bearable. Thank you. And good quick shuffle, and here we go. <laughs> When they are off now, they are quickly running as fast as my Dremel. Everyone is neck and neck. Going down the uh, the final straight, we have no one else in front here. I'm telling you, it is like, uh, uh, you, you know, it is like uh, Mr. GMT's watch, the uh, scratchy or the, 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 the one with the chip in it. Nobody is winning. We've got Jordan Koch in front here. Yes, and, and Kevin is now Kevin is in the lead. He's winning. If he wins, he will win a beautiful Fabergé egg. And Ira coming up the no no who will Bill D has won the race. Oh my God! It is uh, like I've never seen this before. This uh, he won. He came from behind. Unbelievable! Uh, this he is uh, obviously he is a man of character to win this race. Yeah 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 yeah. Unbelievable. <laughs> Good job, Bill D. I wish Blake was familiar with the Higgins. I know it'd be so much funnier if he understood what that means. So, so just quickly, uh, if you are not sure, there was a uh, a dungeon show uh, a couple of months back, and uh, I was on. 
and I had a Rolex, uh, a Rolex Eking case, and I uh, modified it with my Dremel. Uh, Curly was laughing his ass off. Really? Oh, really? It fell off. Yeah. Oh yes, yes, yes. He was trying to be angry, but I made him laugh so much. I, 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 I think I ruined his show. And then I went and made a proper Fabergé egg. It was beautiful. I wish I had pictures to show you, but uh, no, 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 no. But it was a lovely egg, uh, fresh from my uh, from the carton. I remember the, the fridge. Egg. I do remember that. Yeah. No, no, but I made another one. It was beautiful. I put ribbons on it and uh, diamonds. Uh, my my kids' little diamonds from her jewelry set, and uh, it was uh, it was something to behold. Yes, beautiful. Yeah, 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 yeah. It was it was wonderful. So Blake, Daniel, Jax, and JJ, and everybody, you thank you very much. Um, we're at an hour and forty five five minutes. It's middle of night here. I'm gonna wind down, try to get some rest. And uh, we have the Wednesday daytime show for the European audience coming up. AMG, sorry, we're winding down for the night. Apologize. Appreciate you coming by. Uh, but the Wednesday AMG, hello, the boys. Next, <laughs> next scheduled show. We may run a Tuesday show just for the hell of it. Um, and uh, yeah, I appreciate it, everybody. I'm going to run the, I, because we have Higgins on, I'm going to run JJ Mad, which is also my, my favorite. Oh, I love it. It is my favorite. I'll feed the same. Goodbye, everybody. We See love you. Guys. Books. I I genuinely tried to uh, to do JJ a favor, pulling your uh, your ass out uh, one week before a certain event. This is so obvious what you're doing. This is why nobody likes you. Pulling your your ass out. This is all out of the script. You always gotta be the guy with the last word. You're the big cool guy. Your ass out. You're a baby. You're not that smart. ASMR fucking watch talk. Be my fucking guest. I tried to do you a favor. You might talk to you. You couldn't just let it fucking go, right? You gotta just keep pushing. You gotta push it. See, you just wanna push it because you're a baby. And you made a channel with them trying to troll me. Your ass out. That's how much you took it to heart. Ooh, 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 yeah. big boy. You're, you're not ass that smart. Out. What are you talking about? Tommy probably knows. You're not exactly known for smooth transactions and making friends, are you? Your ass out. You triggered so hard. Your ass out. So funny. Tommy probably knows. Let's fuck OC's cop. Go ahead. You've got to jump from side to side. You've got 40 subscribers. I'm going to ask Higgins something. And I want him to answer honestly. Can you do that, Higgins? Look, you're not gonna tell me what I'm gonna reply or not. You fuck me, you moron! What are you? That is a, that is just another lie. Yeah, I know. Don't tell anyone but Germans. Real favor. What are you talking about? This is so obvious what you're doing. Stop coming on all the channels promoting your little bullshit. Nobody cares. I didn't promote you. Could go, you could go make fun you of my said, watch, which is one of the hottest watches out, but you could make fun of it. Let me tell you again. No, I'm not a little child. You're the little child who keeps bringing it up. You're triggered. You're triggered so hard. It's so funny. You want to be a dick? Now we'll play hard. You're the big cool guy. ASMR fucking watch talk. Be my fucking guest.